This, this, this is, 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 is Kazo Un- Unleashed on Sirius XM. What's up, guys? My name is Keizo, and welcome back to Unleashed Radio right here on SiriusXM, Diplo's Revolution. We are here on episode number six. I'm very, very excited for today's episode. I got a very special guest in the studio with me today. He goes by the name of Jumex, and uh, he is a fucking fire rapper. What do you What do you even want to What do you want to call yourself? I don't want to call you a rapper if you're not a rapper, but you like I'm just like pop rock rapper. You're yeah. everything, right? Well, yeah, rock star shit. You know. There you go. Well, welcome Jumex to the studio. Studio. What's up, dude? Chilling. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm just enjoying um, like the last. I just had my last free weekend of the year. I like. I took all of January off from touring and uh, to like relax, just chill, reset physically, oh, mentally, and like get in the studio. Yeah. And then I am back like March. I'm getting my bus tour and like festival grind and everything. So it gets really busy. But um, to have that month off was really really nice. I've never taken a full month off from touring. Yeah. Like, Sure. This is the longest I've ever gone And it was like At the beginning it was awesome And then by the end I was getting a little stir crazy Because I do like Have all this new music And I want to perform it And like get back on the road With my team So Finally getting back into it But it's nice to have a break dude I haven't had this long in LA In a, in a long time <laughs> Yeah How uh, What's going on in your life? What's going on? Um, I mean just been working on music uh, I just had a show last week In Chicago Yeah was it on Valentine's Day? Yeah 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 On val- Valentine's Day It was How- really cool how was it? It was fire? It was really cool. It was all ages and um, yeah, it was just cool per- performing and like it was my first headlining. So like just to see that like the fans connect and shit, you know, like singing the same like lyrics and shit is really cool. That's fire. It gives off like a real life high, I feel like. Yeah, dude, it's, it's you know? like uh, that's what, you know, when you have songs resonate, especially with lyrics and vocal and vocally resonate with with your fan base. And then you finally get to go perform for you, like when it's your headlining show and all of those people are there for you singing mm-hmm. that. And knowing all the lyrics, it's that is like super crazy, a crazy feeling to see all that kind of come to like full circle, like resonate with a crowd yeah. and have them like you get to see like how much that shit like really affects people. That shit is so new to me too. So it's just yeah, like, dude. It's really like it just gave me a fucking joy, you know. Yeah, like, and you're from yeah. you're from Chicago, right? Yeah, that's where you were born. And yeah, uh, are you still wait? You live out here now, right? Yeah, you live out here. How long have you been out here? It hasn't been too long. Um, I mean, I I moved here right when I turned eighteen, so like, and I just turned twenty, so two years. Yeah, that's like, yeah, that's not that in, in LA time. That feels like forever, probably, though, because I've been out here for like eight years now, and it feels like I've lived in LA for my entire life. Yeah, for real. Like, living here just makes the time go faster, I dude. Like. Seriously, I like, I swear the last few years have. <laughs> It's January and the next thing I know it's like October and it's like, <laughs> I'm already like I like I'm like damn dude this year's over and that's how it I, the I last can't even tell it too because the weather stays the same it's no, like nice it's, it's, like, it's yeah <laughs> nice no, and hot you know I feel you on that and I'm I'm sure like do you miss like Chicago weather I mean it's, it's all right the the cold is the pain in the ass you don't fuck like, with the cold you don't like the yeah cold, it's really. the wind in Chicago that makes it cold yeah the cold the cold's chill you know it's it's the, like when the wind starts to get like all like I guess you know like fast and shit that's what the wind chill. That shit is brutal, dude. Yeah, brutal. Especially in Chicago, it's like, it's like what were, uh, there was like photos. What was like a few years ago? Where you had like that Arctic, that like, vo- cold, like what winter vortex that hit and everything was like frozen. Like what yeah. was that movie where like the city froze? Do you guys know what that movie? What that with Jake Gyllenhaal or the where the city fucking froze? Everyone stepped outside and like instantly died and froze. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, um, damn, it's gonna bother me. I'm sure in the next hour I'll I'll figure out the name of that show or that movie. Movie. That sounds like crazy. End of the, yeah, dude, it's like this. It was like end of. It was like one of those movies where it was like end of the world, and like all of the all of the weather was like going like crazy across the entire globe. And I think it was like New York or Chicago, where like everyone like froze. They stepped outside and like turned to ice, and that's what I feel I, like. That would happen. That would happen in Chicago. I feel like when I was outside, like I could literally feel my like hair start to freeze. Like I could probably snap it off. The day after yeah. tomorrow. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say War of the Worlds. I don't know why I would have thought that, but. Because I think I watched that shit like a few days ago. Have you seen War of the Worlds? Tom yeah, Cruise? Yeah. 
Damn, dude. Well, you're 20, right? Yeah, I just turned 20. Okay, and I'm 28. I guess but that movie still would have, you maybe would have hit your, hit your radar <laughs> at a younger age. I don't know. Um, but anyways, dude, what do you got? Uh, what's going on in uh, what's going on in your life musically right now? What have you been working on? I, saw, I know you guys just you just um, released a new song with Lil Xan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. XOXO. That has to be like one of my favorite songs I've been having in the vault for a while. So I'm pretty excited. Like, it just dropped, you know? Yeah, it just dropped. Yeah. Like what? Like last week or? Yeah, the February 14th. Or, yeah. Awesome. Oh, on your, it dropped on your day of your show too. Yeah. So that was a big day for you. That was a really important day. First headline show, big, one of your favorite songs yeah. came out. How was it working with Zan? Um, I mean, he's a pretty cool guy, you know? Yeah. Like, he just really wanted to work for a while, so yeah. I mean, this was a good opportunity. Yeah, you guys work in LA, or did uh, you guys work? Yeah, yeah, else? yeah, yeah. It was in LA. Cool. Yeah, that's fire. Um, the song is dope. I checked it out a few days ago, and uh, it's who Lil Xan just collabed with another person in electronic music. I think it was Whip Cream. This is this female DJ who's really oh, yeah, dope. I heard he it. just he yeah. just made a song with her, and it was pretty cool. I remember that was like the first song I heard from him in a while, um, and the first one in like uh, in like the electronic space. But he's been. He's been killing it. He's been like, you know, got a bunch of cool songs coming out and whatnot. Um, what else are you working on? What else? What's, what's what's going on in in the life of Jumex right now outside of? That show um, I mean, I'm trying to get more shows going because I haven't done that in a while, and it's something I really want to do. You know? Yeah. How are you when you perform live? Like for me, I'm like, I'm pretty fucking crazy. Like I, I'm like, in the yeah. sense of like, I'm like very what's the word i can do to describe i don't want to say aggressive because that just sounds like not good but i feel like i'm like intense when i perform like in a good way not yeah. a scary way not like what the fuck is this guy he's like is this guy good but i'm like crazy when i'm on the stage how, how are you when you perform what's um like well like i mean i mean I, I i perform like i used to perform like high as fuck all the time but then like <laughs> i wouldn't like that's like back in the old day when i had a band and shit but now like ever since i've been doing jumex i've been performing sober and it's just just like just to make sure I give the best, you know, connection and yeah. like, give them the best, you know. For sure, for sure, that's dope. Um, let's see, man. What, uh, like, what, what, what do you like doing in your free time? I always, I see you on Instagram. Every, you're like, you're very, very private on social media. I feel yeah, like. a little like, you bit. Keep things, you yeah. keep things very like. You're not too open. Like I know there's some artists, especially in my world, that like put everything they do on fucking Instagram stories or Twitter. But I feel like when I see your stuff, it's like you get like you get a little bit, but you don't get it all. So like what? I just what do you like doing like, in your free time, dude? What, what's like what's the what's when you're not doing? Music? Yeah, I make a lot of clothes. Um, you I don't do? know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. yeah. I just start like just like studs or just drawing them, painting them. I don't know. I see like some basic ass jeans, and I just want to start like you know like designing shit. Yeah. Uh, I play a couple of video games. Um, I what go to play? the skate park. Oh, I just play Fortnite. For oh, you're a Fortnite. And it's what? like been dying So like You think so? Yeah I don't know It's just like the updates Haven't been good So I think I'm done with that Uh oh You heard it here first Jumex is done with Fortnite <laughs> Shit Do you play on uh, Xbox, PC, uh, PS4? PS4, yeah You gotta come play COD then Yeah 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 The, the new Call, Call of Duty I heard that's really been going It was I, a modern warfare right? Yeah 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 And I don't I don't like It's the first time I ever Like I'm not a So I like I don't know I Before music I played hockey Like my entire life And I wasn't like I never really had time To play video games Like too crazy crazy hard because I was always like training and working to like play pro hockey and and got pretty pretty close and pretty far in it and but I like the only gaming system I had before getting this PS4 that I have now was PlayStation 1 I never had Nintendo I still played it like um, I had Game Boy I had, yeah, I had PlayStation and my favorite game I remember damn when I got my PlayStation 1 I played I played um, Twisted Metal do you remember Twisted Metal do you, you probably don't remember Twisted Metal no but that sounds cool dude it was <laughs> that like, like awesome you would, it was it was you, you would the aesthetic <laughs> in the game is actually so full circle like I feel like all of that type of de, de, all of it's like basically you take like cra it's like you take these crazy fucking cars you got like it's like it's like Mad Max type cars. yeah Mad Max type vibe in cars and you just go trying to explode the cars and kill the people in the cars and like you just drive around and there's like a crazy ice cream truck with like a clown and like machine guns on <laughs> each side and you just go off jumps and yeah man but like that was like my shit when I was a kid and um but like for a large portion of like Call of Duty, Halo, and, and all that, I never, I never played any of that. I never got into it. Not, I don't know why, but had this new COD, I'm like, I'm straight up addicted. Yeah. Like me and my friends, my other, my other music buddies and whatnot, we'll, we'll, we'll go on. Like we'll be in the studio all day working on music, and then our reward is to like go play Call of Duty, and then we'll play it for <laughs> as long as we were in the studio. We'll be like in the studio for eight hours. It'll be like 11 p.m., and then me and my friends will be on COD. It ends up being like 4 a.m. We're like, what the fuck just happened? This time warp of like eight hours. <laughs> and we just played Call of Duty, but it's so much fun. 
It's like the first time in a long time I've been like addicted to a game. Yeah, yeah. I played, sure. We played a little bit of Fortnite, but I just don't like the. I've never got into the fact that you have to like build. Like, it's yeah, like same. I don't do the building. So unrealistic. And I can't do the editing. It's like so sure. unrealistic. Like just building like <laughs> ramps and wood walls, and then you have to go chop trees down. Like I, I, yeah, I yeah, did yeah. for a little bit. I got it, and I was getting a little better, but. I just, I don't know. It wasn't really my thing. But and I know. People go so fast on building. Dude, shit, it's like. I can't even keep up. It's either. like once you. You'd have to, like. I feel like with that game specifically, you had to get on it right when it came out and practice get really good. Because if you're just getting into Fortnite now, like every kid is good. Like yeah. everyone's already so good that it just, like, you just. When you start playing, you're like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to just. I'm going to quit this right now. This wasn't. This wasn't very easy to play. And that's what it was like for me. But, um. Yeah, man. I play. I play a lot of video games in my free time now. I've been getting back into the gym you know I, I i went a long time like like not going to the gym like i because music is like music will take up as you know like music will take up your entire fucking day yeah. like between studio and like any outside work or your managers meetings whatever photo shoots whatever i just feel like i was doing only music 24 7 which was great but i wasn't getting in the gym and so like the last with this time off that i had off from touring i started getting in the gym like every day in the morning and i gotta tell you it's been like the the craziest difference in my day and like my writing mood going into the studio like feeling good like doing cardio working out or like hitting the dry sauna and you just feel like in a new person so i'm just trying to get like back in like my good shape because i was like good shape before with hockey and then it went away i became like you know kind of lazy with all that and now i'm now i'm trying to get back i'm trying to be like you know that's what we've been on you've been on that too you've been you've been getting into yeah, the gym yeah, three, times yeah. A week. three times a week yeah mondays wednesdays fridays yeah oh you have a schedule you have like you go you go yeah. you, you guys go lift you go lift yeah like football training yeah like strength and conditioning yeah that's what i used to do back in the day i used actually before music like in the transition of like quitting hockey I, I played hockey until I was 19 and I played hockey like from like age 3 until 19 like moved away from home lived in Canada and I always thought like I always loved doing strength and conditioning and so when I quit hockey I went to school for one semester at Texas Tech when I moved back to because I'm from Texas and I moved back home and I didn't know what I was going to do in my life well I, I didn't know what I wanted to do but I liked strength and conditioning I was like I can be a strength and conditioning coach and I went to school for that for a semester and I got really heavy into all of that type of training and like doing all that crazy shit that you guys are probably doing for football but it's a, it's crazy it's so much fun yeah I was basically the same way for real I took yeah. exercise science for college yeah yeah but then I realized you know what it was when I went to school freshman college and I was like I'm gonna do strength and conditioning and then I got all these like basic courses that I had to do like algebra and all this shit that like didn't even Damn. involve strength and conditioning and then the one class I had for strength and conditioning I was like so entry level and I had been like doing it for so long that I was like oh, what is this what am I what am I doing in school right now and that was like kind of like a big reason why I was like I don't know if I really fit into the the the, the, uh, the traditional schooling um, format or world and so like almost towards the end of my first semester I like found out about this college or not college like a trade school I guess in, in California in LA here called Icon Collective and I had like a kid that I went to high school with who went and he was like posting about it like yo this changed my life learn how to produce da, 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 da. and I was like already into like dance music and like into like the music called like the, the, the world and kind of getting into producing but like doing it from like you know like pirating software off the internet and like going on YouTube and trying to learn how to produce and I was like I don't know what the fuck I'm doing like this is not the way I can learn and then I uh, I ended up like calling the school admission like I was like studying for like finals for, for school and I was like I got this email and this phone number I'm like I'm just gonna call these guys and then I ended up talking to this dude on the phone for like three and a half hours and uh, about this music school I was like yo I need I want to do this I, I don't think I can do like I can't do I can't stay here I want to this is if I'm gonna if I'm gonna try this I'm gonna do it now and uh, I literally like prepared my parents I'm like how am I going to go home to my parents and let them know that I want to drop out of school and like move to LA and like be a, mu be a musician and like without making it seem like guys I'm gonna I'm gonna drop out and be a rock star like screw like everything that I've done my entire life so I like I like since I was in college and I was doing all these like PowerPoints and like all this shit I like went to my my dorm and I made a PowerPoint presentation for my family like laid out bullet points of like realistic jobs like I could get in the music industry like without actually being like I want to be an artist I was like you know I can go to the school and I can be like a mixing engineer for someone else and like 
an engineer and run sessions and this is how I make money. So I wrote this, I did this like 10 page PowerPoint and I made handouts. So I like sat them down at home. I like passed out these like PowerPoint, like these, like these pamphlets that I put with all this other information. I'm like, guys, here it is. This is what I want to do. And like laid them out this like, oh, like this like very corporate looking like presentation, like bullet points swiping by with the effects. And uh, you know, they were like, because they let me leave home for hockey. They're like, we, we see that you're passionate about this. You can, we'll support this because it's A, a lot cheaper than college. And it was only nine months. And, uh, or you can stay in school or you can, uh, you can leave right now. So it was like either like finish the year of school or drop out before the end of my first semester. And, and I was like, all right, I'm doing this right now. And so I went and unenrolled from school, packed up my car day after Christmas, just drove my like old janky Yukon from Texas all the way to LA alone. And here we are on Sirius XM now with the Jumex. <laughs> yeah, it's fire. It was like it was an interesting time, man. And I, you're 20, you said. Yeah. So that's like right when I moved to LA. So you're the age when I first moved to LA. Yeah. And I remember when I was in LA, not even old enough to drink. And I was like, I didn't know what to do. It was like a crazy city, and I was just learning how to make music. So I would just spend like 16 hours a day in the studio outside of my classes and just work because I didn't know what else to do out here. I didn't know anyone. And like when you first move here, it's like the most overwhelming city I think in the entire world. Yeah, like, for sure. Because it's like a, it's not like a downtown like Chicago or New York where everything's yeah. like condensed into one area. Yeah, it's like that type of city where everything's you can't. It's not a walking city, right? So everything that you want to maybe do, you have to go find somehow in a car. Like you don't just find it. Like oh, I walked around and stumbled to this cool area it's like you got to drive yourself to a different area of LA and I remember being your age and just like not knowing what the hell I was doing out here yeah. but it was a uh, that's crazy I didn't even put that together that you're 20 and I'm tw I've been out here for eight years now it's wild yeah this place is so spread out for real yeah yeah what do you do uh do you do anything like out here like do you uh, do you skateboard or anything I thought you were, yeah I skateboard a little yeah bit. I saw you do that once on your Instagram story yeah I was I mean there's really nice skate parks out here yeah, I, I went. I go to Venice sometimes because like the Venice Beach is really nice. Do you skate at that park? That one that's like nah, right. it's too steep for me. Is it? Yeah. It's just what did you say? Too steep? Yeah, like the the, the drop. Yeah. yeah, it's like is it like for more advanced? Are you like do you just skateboard for fun? Yeah, yeah. just to, like the vibe out, listen to some music. Yeah, I was so bad. I tried skateboarding when I was a kid. When I was like thirteen. I was like, I want to skateboard, and I like went to like the Van Skate Park in Texas, and like I was so uncoordinated on a skateboard though. Like I played hockey, so I could skate, and like. When it came to skateboarding, I was so fucking bad. Like, couldn't do anything. Like, so intimidated to, like, drop in on anything. And so, I remember, um, like, ditching the skateboard, and I did, like, ag I did, like, aggressive, in like, inline skating at the parks, because that's what I was good at. But the only time I've ever broken my arms, I broke both my arms at a skate park. Like, I was on, like, one time was on some, like, ridiculous thing where I was, like, trying to learn how to go up and down a ramp, like, a, like a half pipe, and I, like, slipped on, like, a candy wrapper, and, like, broke my arm like five minutes into my first time at a skate park and the next time I like just like tripped over some like broken wood it was like a janky skate park it was definitely like Damn. wouldn't be around now definitely a liability to everyone skating at this place but I used to do that back in the day that was a lot of fun and I wanted a skateboard I just was not I just didn't have it didn't yeah. have it I don't even think I could even get on a board now I could try never could ollie never yeah. could do it like yeah. tried so hard <laughs> never could get that fucking board off the ground so bad at it so bad at it but um what else man what else is going on man what are you getting so you have any shows lined up right now anything um i mean not yet but i really want to do texas and i'm, I'm trying to do Mexico. why texas why texas what is what i, mean, is I have some family in texas but oh, like fire. also like i think i have a lot of fans in texas too yeah do you feel and like i just love texas like what's your favorite city in texas san antonio for sure really and, yeah and i'll support the san antonio uh, hey Spurs. That's, that's cool that's yeah. fire san antonio is like i actually you know what i've only played like one show in my life in san antonio but um i'm from houston yeah that's like where i'm from it's like more up right uh no oh, i think it's, it's it's more south yeah it's south. oh for sure uh houston's like right on the gulf like right on the water it's like the most humid place on earth outside of like new orleans and other places like that but it's it's super hot but uh, san antonio's dope man have you ever been to the alamo Did you yeah, ever go yeah, to that? yeah that's cool a river walk it's a nice good, vibe good mexican food good margaritas the whole 
But you're not old enough to have margaritas, <laughs> so you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know about that. Um, but man, yeah, Texas, man, Texas has got crazy fans, crazy cool fans. Yeah, like they I, really do. They have state fairs. They're really cool. Yeah, I never. Actually, just like markets and shit. I, I would go to those all the time. Really? I yeah. never even. I've never been to a state fair in my entire life. Really? Anywhere. Yeah. Fuck. I should have done that. They have so many like markets too. Like they're so big and they have like food and like clothes and it's really. Yeah. Cool. Oh, like in San Antonio. Just like in Texas. Just in general. Yeah. Have you ever been to? Have you done? Have you done like? Have you ever driven from like a city to another city in Texas? Um. Have I you ever, when I was very young. Have you ever been to Bucky's? Do you know what Bucky's is? Mm, I don't know. The Beaver. Oh my goodness, dude. Next time you're in Texas, you have to do this. So, if you play a show in Texas and um, you end up driving from like city to city, there's this place called Bucky's, and it's like. It's like a gas station. It meets. It's like gas station on steroids meets Disneyland. It's like this fucking <laughs> beaver, beaver with a like Boy Scout hat on and a little, like a little like coat, and that's the mascot. And it's like a gas station the size of of Disneyland, and they sell anything you could ever want in this gas station, like what? beef jerky, chocolate, all these types of foods, candies, and they sell all of this merch with this fucking beaver on it, like camo hoodies, shirts, anything you could ever think of like that you could wear has this beaver on it. And it's just like, people will like go out of their way in Texas just to like, if you've never been there, if you're not from Texas, just to go like take photos of this place. There's there's like a few of them throughout Texas and they're like, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's like it's like going to the mall, but for a gas station, it's, it's insane. So, the sh- shout out pretty Bucky's. Chill. Shout out <laughs> Bucky's. They got good stuff there. But it's just like a crazy, a crazy little side note. I, I, uh, I really like gas stations. Actually, that have like that are really big. <laughs> you like you, you just, just, you just yeah. like gas stations. You yeah, I, I, would, I was, I was actually driving to Indiana from Chicago, and like we would just stop at hella gas stations. There were big ass gas stations. Too. Yeah. Let's see. What's your? Uh, I just collect hella what's snacks. your? What's yeah? What's your favorite food in Chicago? What are you big deep dish? Do you like deep dish pizza? Yeah, that's alright. You kind of like. Eh, I just have from to have here. Uh, pineapple on it. I feel like. Wait, what? Like any pizza, I have to have pineapple. You you like pineapple yeah, on pizza? I'm not oh. gonna eat pizza without the pineapple. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> so we can we can end the interview now. <laughs> that's that's just not even right. You like pineapple on pizza? Yeah, this, should, this is so good. <laughs> that's always been. A, I've seen that debate on uh, on social media before. I think there's a it's a big there's a big line in the sand for people that like like pizza with pineapple and people that don't. And I just I fall on the side that just doesn't. I don't think that makes <laughs> any sense. I never liked pineapple really to begin with. It was yeah. never my favorite. And so throwing it on pizza just seemed like. <laughs> yeah, but how do you get pineapple deep dish? That's even more crazy. You just put the pineapple. Do you even like? Do, do people look at you funny in Chicago? They're like, you want pineapple on your deep dish pizza? <laughs> That's like a thing that they probably don't do out there. Or do they do it? Nah, but like you can put anything. <laughs> Some people push put like fish on them. That's kind of weird. I mean, fish, just yeah. like anchovies. Yeah, like little fishes. Okay, I, well, I can see that over. <laughs> but the thing is, I, that makes more sense to me than than fucking pineapple yeah. all day long. I mean, so I don't know anybody who would put like a strawberry on them. You know? Yeah. Yeah, th- you should probably think people think the same about pineapple too. <laughs> so you like, so you like, what's the place? Let's see. I have a good deep dish pizza story. The first time I ever had it. Do you do you like Lou Malinati's? Oh, uh, I never heard about it. Wait, what? Bro, are you here from Chicago? Yeah, I you, go to like Giordino's. Okay, well Lou right. Malinati. That's crazy. You didn't even know about. it. I thought that was the spot. I guess I'm wrong. I don't. Or, I don't know. <laughs> Gio, Gio, what's the other place called? Uh, Giordano's? Oh, Giordano's. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's a good. That's spot. next to Navy Pier and shit. Oh, okay. It's well, really I, cool. I haven't been to that place, but. But my manager's from Chicago, and when I had my first show in Chicago ever, I played at the Concord Music Hall. Yeah. And I had never had um, deep dish pizza or like real. I've been to like, I was like, I guess before that, when I was younger, I like had been to Uno's. And then everyone's like, that's not even real pizza. And I'm like, all right, cool. So where do I get the real stuff? And then my manager took me and his family to Lou Malinati's. Like, this was like 2014 or 13. This was like a while ago. And I'm so hungry. We just got off the flight and we, it was like a weird flight. We got in super late and I hadn't eaten all day. I'm like, do I need pizza? I need it now. And they're like, okay, okay, we're going to go to this place the best place to get it and I'm like I'm gonna eat so much deep dish pizza but no one really told me with like deep dish pizza that it's like four to five like six lo- like big slices of pizza and typically a human eats like one maybe two if they're crazy and I like at this place and I like didn't know this and like I go in there and like order a pizza and I eat like six slices of this thing like the entire pie <laughs> and like didn't realize like that it was just grease soaked butter crust and I ate this entire thing and I I literally went to bed I went to bed that night thinking like having like like heart palpable like just my heart was like freaking out I thought I was having a heart attack from all this grease and all this butter yeah. and all this pizza dude it was the most insane thing in my entire life I never felt so full but uh I like deep dish pizza I don't think 
I would have to say though, going to some really great places in like New York and, and other places, I, I prefer New York style over over deep dish. I deep dish is too one. big. It's like it's like three meals. Yeah, I don't really like deep dish. It's all right, but it's yeah. like I like the normal pizzas. Yeah. Do, do you like? Do you have a spot out here in LA where you like pizza? Um, it's kind of hard. Really. You got I've like, a lot of sushi here. It's lit. Yeah. It's yeah. That shit is lit. You can't get better sushi. Like LA's got all the spots. Where do you like getting sushi? Um, I mean, I, I went to this new sushi place. It's like in Glendale. It's like a conveyor belt, and it's kind of cool. You ever been to it? I have not been to the one. In, I've not been to a, a conveyor belt place out here, but I've done it in like Japan. Yeah, I, they had one in Japan. Too. I, I guess I just never there. trusted doing conveyor belt sushi anywhere but Japan. Yeah. I just felt like it just didn't make sense to me. I'm like, this is going to be like, <laughs> this doesn't seem very fresh. But yeah. I went to this place. There's this place in Japan. You been to Japan? Yeah. Fire. When did you go to Japan? Um, uh, June. I I played three shows in so went, Tokyo and Osaka. You went last year. Yeah. Fire. Yeah, Osaka's cool. Osaka's a great city. Yeah, that shit is nice. Yeah, I did. I've done Tokyo. Oh, I've done Osaka and Nagoya. Um, but there's this place, and I can't remember the name right now. But it was like I blew my mind the first time I ever went to Japan, which was like a while back, because I was like so 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 hyped on getting sushi there, and we went to some really great, like really like nice omakase. Say spots that fit like a couple people in it, but then there's this one place in the middle of Shibuya where you like you sit down and you sit in front of like it, it's just like a hundred people and you sit in like like lines, right? Like like you would be like at a like like a cafeteria table and you have yeah. like iPads in front of you and you just order all of the food that you want up to a certain amount on this iPad, hit send, and then like this fucking looks like what like what would be a train track is in front of you and it just your little plates come by and they just stop and ring a bell and you just you take it off, yeah, eat yeah. It and you put it back and you say done and it's just like bro i it was you could eat like you could eat your body weight for like 30 bucks and you you couldn't you would probably be done for like three days of eating food and it was like the coolest shit and it was so good i didn't that was like my conveyor belt quote unquote experience with sushi i go back there every time now it's so good yeah yeah but there's a lot of good sushi out here so much good food so yeah. much that's I, I really like tokyo that's Dude. that's a nice place that's one of my favorite cities i've ever been to in the entire world is tokyo yeah it's like such a vibe for real yeah it's got everything in terms of any it's like so fashion forward too like i feel like whatever whatever stuff style or trends or any sort of like for, for, for clothing especially yeah. I feel like it starts in Tokyo or in, like in Japan and then it makes oh, its way sure. to LA like anything that's like the next wave is like already in Japan yeah, that's, and then, that's cool and then it makes its way out here so like when you go over there and you get to go shop and you see everyone everyone there is like dressed cool too I've noticed like everyone has like yeah, really sure. cool style in Tokyo and it's like stuff that you don't see out here but then you realize like six months later everyone that you saw six months prior in Tokyo or everyone in LA is wearing that now and you're like oh shit that's yeah I do it, see that it's that's <laughs> how it works it's like a trend but um yeah dude I, I love Tokyo I love I love going to Asia man I really do I have so much fun out there such a good spot. This, this, this is, 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 is Kazo Un Unleashed. Let's see. We talked about pizza, sushi. What what other foods can we talk about right now? I'm a big Italian food fan. I love all that. I'm Italian though. What are you? What what, what um, are? You, do you know like what, what's your ethnicity? Yeah yeah. I'm Mexican and German. Okay fire. Yeah. Have you been to Germany? No, nah, I want to though. Damn, dude, Germany, yo. I, they go know, crazy. I don't even think it matters what music. Like, I think everyone in Germany, like, depending if you like electronic music or rap or, or rock or whatever, everyone there is like on another level of intense. Like, for real, like for the fun. fans are so dude, the craziest fans in the entire world. That's what I love about them. Like, they're so energetic and they're so like you know hyped. It's like it's like so it's play. like playing like in front of like I feel like you could play for a hundred people or you could play for like. 10,000 people in Germany and it's like no matter what situation it feels like you're like playing at like the World Cup for some reason everyone's crazy <laughs> there dude absolutely insane like I love one of my favorite places to play in Germany is probably Cologne um, there's this place there called uh, Boats House and it's like if you ask any DJ with their favorite place they've ever played in Europe I guarantee 95% of them will say Boats House it's like this it's like this notoriously crazy club in, uh, in Cologne and Everyone wears black and it's like low ceilings, like no higher than this. And, you know, usually in like venues where like the ceilings aren't very high, they're like, there's like no pyro, no fire, no anything like that. But this place, they put pyro on the ceiling. Like they have like these, like these, like a uh, pyro, like these, these, this pyro setup to where like it shoots off over the crowd's head into like the, the air, like into the ceiling. And it's like low ceilings and they shoot off see everything like 
in these low low uh, this small building and it's like the craziest thing dude like everyone like moves together whether they're moshing or jumping like everyone's like it's like a wave like everyone's moving one way or the other and it's like it's a vibe for sure it's like probably one of the crazier places i've ever played but you gotta go you gotta do germany man germany is germany's awesome yeah for sure i definitely want to visit i feel like you'd like berlin berlin has got like a really uh, got a really good vibe good style um like really really cool art art scene uh the tattoo game out there is insane i see a lot i see you have a lot of tattoos yeah i love how they feel yeah dude i i just got my fingers done like two weeks ago oh no about about a month ago now and you have your fingers done yeah you got some parts how did that feel for you i didn't feel them actually you didn't Nah. what do you mean you didn't feel them? like they didn't feel like anything really yeah it just confused me because i'm i was like i was so new to tattoos I was like expecting to paint. Did you get those kind of first? Did you yeah, get your yeah. fingers done almost like I see you have a lot on your arms Yeah now. my fingers are the first ones Really? Yeah They were your first tattoos? Yeah and then like my face tattoo was like the third tattoo Really? You're just like fuck it I'm, I'm going all in It was addicting It's like mentally addicting How did the face tattoo feel? It did I thought that it would hurt too but it, it feels like it didn't hurt like it didn't hurt at yeah, all Yeah I, I mean right right, right below right on your cheekbone I yeah. feel like it's got It feels like something it only felt like something was popping like in my skin but yeah. it didn't hurt like it was like a popping feel and, interesting these finger tattoos i i shit you not like i have my arms i have my arms all done yeah. too and these were the most painful tattoos i've ever i've i've i've, I've gotten out of any of them dude like yeah i know some, for a fact like right next to the dude, that's nail that bed, hurts, that's what oh my god <laughs> um it was like my hand i'll show you a photo after this my hands like for some reason also any tattoo i get on the left side of my body versus my right hurts exponentially worse really yeah for some reason anything i've ever because i'll get like i got my arm ditches done at the same time but he started right and it was like oh this isn't that bad everyone makes a big deal about the arm ditch thing it's gonna hurt so bad i'm like oh it's not that bad and i got my left side done it was like the worst pain ever i'm like oh shit and i've realized anything on this side always hurts more than this side but he did my left hand first and and the way he the way he tattooed was he did each finger in full before the next one so it was like Damn. mentally exhausting because he's just working on one finger and then you realize you have like seven more to go or eight more to go and you're like oh my god this yeah. is gonna be and then the first time he touches he touched my pinky it was down near the nail bed he started down below so it was like the worst pain oh, on the my. most painful finger on the most painful side first and i was like yo i don't know if i can sit through this like this is i was like internally like flexing my stomach the entire time like a ball like it was in this like little fetal position like sweating profusely and my hands do i should you know like my fingers look like sausages when they were done like straight sauce each finger look like i was just like like bare knuckle boxing the curb the wall like just like aggressively my hands were so swollen and yeah. it, I had to like go home and like I literally like went and ice my knuckles like like I was a boxer for like an hour. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is messed up. No, nah, man, it was cool. I'm surprised I didn't you didn't feel it. Uh, yeah, I didn't feel it, but like I, I don't know why. Like it, like after like my hands were like shaking. Holy, oh yeah, my hands were shaking. I too. couldn't stop shaking them. They're just like shaking by themselves. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? So what is your favorite tattoo? What do you think was your favorite tattoo you got on you right now? Um. Uh... Probably this little cloud. Oh shit, you guys! Something. How did that feel? That that kind of burned a little bit. I did this in Venice. You're so nonchalant about it, dude. You're like it kind of burned. Like yeah. I hear everyone's like stomach tattoos are the worst. Yeah, I, I don't want to do my chest yet, but I want to do my neck and chest real soon. I really want to get my neck tattooed. Same, I, I just kind of like don't know what I'm gonna get there yet. So I figure yeah, what I'm feel. gonna do is my arms are almost done. I'm gonna go onto my legs. I want to start like right above my kneecap, lower thigh, and then go all the way down. Do all the way to my ankles. Just fill them up. And then I'm gonna do back, a little bit of my back, and then I'll do stomach, and then I'll do chest last. But I want to be like completely, like no ex, no room. Yeah, same. Yeah, I'm like I'm addicted to tattoos for sure. Yeah. I remember my first one I got. I was in, I was 18 years old, and then I only came, I came out to LA with one tattoo, like my this bicep, like this one in Latin, like 18 year old, like got his first tattoo, didn't yeah. you know, like some cheesy stuff. Um, and I came with no other tattoos, and then I got my second tattoo, and then when I got my second tattoo out here, it was like, it was game over. I started <laughs> getting them like, me and my friend would go, we lived across the street from a tattoo parlor in the yeah. city, and we would be bored, because we he's a, he's a producer also. And so we don't like, have, we didn't have like- Wait, which one is Studio City? Uh, it was called, um, oh, it was, it, it changed names. It was right off of, it was right off of- um, Ventura? Uh, no, not of, uh, no, oh. not of Ventura, it was off of, um, 
Magnolia Boulevard. So I guess oh. more North Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, but we would go across the street, and he would just text me. He like lived a floor above me, and he started getting tat. He had tattoos too, and like he was as like whimsical, like just on a whim, like let's yeah. go get tatted. And he would text me like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Nothing, just working on music." He goes, "Do you want to go get tattooed?" I was like, "All right, cool, sure." So we would just walk across the street like on a Tuesday, like 1 p.m. No idea what we're doing. We just go get tattooed across the street for part <laughs> of it, and so that That's started fine. my like addiction to just like going and like getting tattooed like without any idea of what I was gonna get like picking something like in the moment and then now I'm just like I realized once I started doing that though like you got some more room on your arms yeah for sure I like realized I I should have probably like been a bit more like careful about what I got tattooed where because now there's like prime real estate where I wish I could have gotten something different so you know but that's why I'm just gonna end up yeah. tattooing my whole body because there's always room but I want to do my my palms Oh, I heard like the palms and like the inner fingers hurt. Yes. I don't want to do those. Ever. I want to do my palm, but I'm very scared. I'm like legitimately scared. I'm like, this is going to be the. I'm, like, the palm's just, so tough. You yeah. Know? Well, you just like, I mean, if you just rub your fingers across your palm, it's, it's really sensitive. It's like tickles. It, it, uh. and, then you rub, and then I realized I rubbed it on my, my fingers and I'm like, I don't feel anything. And that hurt so bad. And I didn't feel anything. Like right now, I'm rubbing. I'm like, it's nothing. But rub your palm and it's like very sensitive and I'm like oh god <laughs> so I don't know that may be like the last one or maybe I'll just do it one day and just yeah. get it over with and then cry <laughs> cry cry during the entire session who knows but I'm a big tattoo advocate I like I love them I have got a lot of cool tattoo artists out here I work with and um you know I just love getting tattoos it's like my it's one of my favorite things in the world so you know Kato. Unleashed you got some. Sh you like. You want to play shows in Texas. You got. You got Germany. You potentially want to do. Um, what do you got? Um, what's? Uh, I saw you got your haircut though. Where's yeah. Before yeah. we on this, you you changed you changed the, the style up a little bit. Yeah, my my curls were dead, so I was just cut them and gonna grow them out. It's again. tight. This is dope though. This is dope. What is your natural hair color? Um, like d dark brown. Dark dark brown. Yeah. So what's the what's like the idea behind with Jumex like all of this green? What made you like kind of like? Because I feel like everything yeah. you have branding, even what you're wearing now, has got green on it. Like what's what uh, what what, I, what started that? I mean I, I mean I tried to, like I dyed my hair all types of color, but I feel like I don't know like just for like. Like, since I'm like kind of caramel, like the green looks like, yeah, so it just works, I feel like. So it's just by trial and error, you just tried other colors and yeah. you know, green. But I feel like your fans, do you think you now your fans and everything, like they resonate with that green? Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah for gonna, sure. Are you gonna stick with this yeah, color? I, yeah, I'm sticking with green for sure. Yeah, it's kind of like your your brand. Yeah, know? yeah, I love the color. <laughs> yeah, so how, I, I like I went, and I went to your like, your social media, and your Instagram and everything, you have like crazy fans. Yeah, like yeah. Very respond like you have a lot of people that are like very responsive and like all about social media for you. Like yeah, you have some sure. cool fans. Have yeah. you had a chance to like meet a bunch of them and talk to them? Um, a couple of them. Like I, I seen a couple um when I did a L show in L um, LA and then when I went to Chicago. Yeah. But a lot of them are from Brazil, which is really cool. You have a lot of fans in Brazil. Yeah. That's that's really cool. In Chile and stuff. You have a lot of fans in South America. Yeah. Damn, I love South America. I've been there once. I did. Never been. It's, dude, I mean, you got, most of your fans are from there. You're going to probably end up playing a show there <laughs> yeah. soon enough. Yeah, but yeah, for sure. I did a show in, in Chile, but I got to go to Peru. Like, we, I, I decided, like, yo, if I'm going to go to Chile, which Peru is really close, I got to go do Machu Picchu. So, like, two years ago, I did Machu Picchu in Peru, which was, like, one of the most insane like experiences I've ever had from traveling and then did a show in Chile and it was insane the fans there are kind of like the same vibe and even in Germany just like every single person there is doing the same thing like whether you're jumping moshing whatever it is they all do everything in unison which is wow. fucking super cool yeah that's, that's why awesome. it feels like you're at like some world cup game or something everyone's like chanting the same shit doing the same thing and it just looks it just looks so cool from like a stage perspective yeah, yeah. it's it's, <laughs> it's awesome it's fire man so um Hopefully you get a chance to play there soon. You got any yeah. fest you got any festivals that are announced that you're gonna be on? Um I'm not sure yet. You still working on all that? Yeah, the last one I did was Day in Vegas. How was that? It was alright. It was yeah. one of my first it was my first festival. Was it? Yeah. How was that nerve was it was that nerve wracking? Yeah, for sure. Uh, just like it was my first time playing against that many like people. Yeah. I guess. So yeah. I felt the adrenaline rush. But was, it was cool. That was in October, right? That, right? Or well, that was like right or November. November first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had a show on Halloween in Vegas on Halloween night and then everyone was like oh, going yeah. a day in Vegas the next day and that lineup looked crazy yeah, yeah it was it's a lot of fun. on a spinning conveyor belt thing 
What? Our hand, our like backs were to the crowd, and then we spun around, and there was just like twenty thousand people in front of us. Wait, is that just the stage was set up like that? Yeah. What? <laughs> That's crazy. Was that the most people you think you've played in front of so far? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How is sure. that? How is that feeling? It, I mean, it, it was just like whoa, a lot of people, you know. Yeah. But it was just like chill, you know. Yeah, it like, was chill. When I'm on stage, I like like do my best, you know. So. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. That's yeah. cool. I remember like I th- what is it, like I don't even know what the largest show I've I've, I've played, but I think it could have been like could have been somewhere in like oh, I would say Coachella was really big. Any, actually, you know what? Anytime I've done EDC Vegas, have you ever been to an EDC before? Mm-hmm. Well, you're gonna have to if you got time in May, you're gonna have to come out to EDC Vegas with me because yeah. uh, it just got announced uh, not too long ago, and um, that festival is one of the most insane. Insane festival. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 like over I think over the course of three days they get like close to half a million people. And it's like last year I played the crazy s- turn of events. I played on a Sunday. I was playing a really good time slot on uh, the stage called Circuit Grounds and it's like one of the bigger stages there and we were we take a helicopter because like all the artists will take a helicopter into the festival because it's just like what they do it's really cool and um yeah. but it was really windy that day and so they were like freaking out about the helicopters when we get there it's still really windy but it's at this it's at the vegas speedway so it's like a bowl and all the wind will go in and it gets crazy in there because it's like all the wind oh, gets shit. sucked in there and so like an hour before my set i'm like doing press and i'm, I'm like it's, it's like really really windy like like torn, it was crazy. Like not normal win, and they're like, well, I "Think we may have to shut the festival down." And I'm like, "Oh no, please do not do this right now." Like, I don't want to not have the chance to play the set. It was a really big one for me last year, and they ended up unfortunately shutting down like the main stage, like what, like the, the one of the main stages, and like a few other stages. But they didn't shut my stage down. Okay. So everyone that was like at the other stages, that whole every stage, like like the main stage probably holds like I don't know, like. 40,000 people, 50,000, probably more actually. I'm probably under like under counting the number, but like 50, maybe 50. But then like everybody that didn't get to go watch the main stage came to my stage, which was like the second largest stage. And so I swear to God, I think they said I had, it was like 90,000 people, almost 100. Damn. I've never played in front of that many people. I mean, I've played massive shows, but it gets to a certain point where you play in, in front of so many people, I think where it, you start to like, you don't, you don't really like, doesn't like really hit you that these are just that each person is like a singular human being at all because it's like waves like when you start to see like that many people you're like you start to lose like i guess like just lose the concept of like those are all humans and i remember it being like one of those things where like it it went over capacity outside of the stage and then like the lights could only go so far from the stage and it would it would hit the back and then there was every every so often and i'd be like damn there's a lot of people here because it was like to the end of the stage everywhere like massive and i'm like there's probably like 50 50 000 people here and then Next thing you know, the lights hit even farther, and there was like another 50. I'm like, there's like two stages worth of people behind the people I thought were it ended. I had no idea, and it was like one of the it was like I, like Damn. crazy. But then again, I, I sometimes feel like when you play big shows like festivals, you start to become a little disconnected with the people. Uh, not disconnected, but it's hard to like. There's a big difference between playing in front of like 100 people or 500 people in a small venue versus like 50,000 people. Yeah. Because you get to see every face, you get like actual interactions. And I find that as fun as it is playing in front of like that many people, you don't, you kind of get a little disconnected. But some of my favorite sets are like when you play smaller, smaller cap shows in front of like less than a thousand people. Cause it's like a, it's like a fucking rager right in front of you, like a house party almost where you can, or whatever it is, it's just right in front of you. You can see almost every single person's yeah. reactions. And I find that to be, almost almost even more fun than like large festivals so I don't know that's my two cents on shows so you know this this is is Kezo Unleashed I guess we're at a point here where I can kind of um, we worked on a song we were able to work on a song when did we have our studio session January was it January so we had a session in January, yeah, that's what it was, during my time off. And um, we about, but uh, I was able to get in the studio with Jumex and uh, another artist named Graves, who wasn't in the session with us, but he was one of the producers on the song. Um, and we created a really dope song for you guys that uh, we titled Breakable. And 
is going to be coming to you guys very, very soon. More info, more info dropping soon. You may have heard it in my live sets. I've been able to play a little bit of it out. By the way, I've been playing the song out, and it goes off. Oh, fire. Every single time. Kids love it. I'm excited. Yeah, sure. I, try, I try not to play, like, too much of the vocal, vocal yet, because I wanted to save a little bit until we got closer to the release. But, dude, kids are loving the song and loving whatever little like kind of snippets I've shared of the vocal, yeah. they're like, yo, this is crazy. Um, but you know what's crazy about this song? I never even told you. That song, when we picked that song in the studio, um, that song had like a shell, like had been like produced for, or st the start of that song happened so long ago, like probably almost two years ago. I remember I was like, kind of like, I go through like spurts in the studios where I like, I can't work in the same room. I want to get like fresh air perspective, just change it up. And like when I first started making music before I, I had studios to work in, I would go work in coffee shops. Like that's just why I, I wanted to work in coffee shops because I feel like everyone in a coffee shop that's working is like working and you're like, oh, I can be productive. I want to be, people are working. I want to be around people that are working. So like one day I was like, I right, fuck it. I'm just going to go back to a coffee shop and work on music, which I hadn't done in so like years. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this. And I sat in like this coffee shop and I started breakable like the synth like the like the first drop like the melodic part i started that in like a, a verve like a verve coffee roastery in my headphones like around like everyone like on their email and it's just crazy because now <laughs> seeing where that i didn't even know where that song was gonna go like i didn't know it was gonna have a vocal at that time i just started making something i'm like all right i just want to make something kind of melodic because a lot of my stuff is like a little heavier a little grittier and i'm like all right i want to do something a bit more melodic and then I'm just sitting at this coffee shop with my headphones on like we are right now, just like nerding out in the corner with like a cold brew. And then the fucking song is born, which is just crazy to see that little idea turn into what it is now. I don't know. It's, it's cool. That's yeah. And then I didn't know what to do on the second part of it. So I sent it to Graves. Did you, do you, um, did you know, fun fact about Graves, that he worked on Watch the Throne for Kanye, the dude on the song? Yeah, he, he did that. all the production for, he, he did a bunch of uh, production for uh, Kanye. He did all of the lights. Uh, in like the Watch the Throne album, which is crazy because I feel like a lot of people in my world don't even know that about him and like they see him as an EDM, like EDM producer, DJ, but then they don't even realize his like production credits. So like he's done like work with Bieber, Kanye, and like a ton of people. And uh, so he ended up doing like that the heavy dubstep, like the heavy part of the song, which oh, is crazy sure. because usually I'm the one that does the heavy stuff and he does a lot more like he does a lot of melodic stuff sometimes too but we like kind of switched the revolt uh, the roles on that one and i did the melodic and he did the heavy and yeah man that was a fun studio session though with you yeah that's good, cool that studio we uh it's a place called record plant out here in la and is that in west hollywood yeah we're like we're like down the street from it right now we oh, can walk sweet. to it it's like right there it's crazy but i love that studio i love the hospitality that they give at that studio it's just it's so easy to work in there it's so much fun but i'm just excited about the song man i'm really really excited about this one it's gonna be a fun one i think you guys are gonna really love it everyone out there listening it's gonna be a i don't know it's just gonna be a uh impactful song on on more than one level because there's three people involved um there's there's it's kind of crazy how it goes from a lot to heavy and it's just yeah, got this I, like i like the levels like yeah it goes back and forth. it's a wave and it's like one of those songs where from start to finish you listen to the whole thing and it doesn't like really repeat there's like there's an opening a middle and there's like there's a, a resolution to the entire song which i think is really cool because a, a lot of times in music nowadays i'll hear you know like half a song and then it gets repeated and then there's maybe something a little extra on top but this one just feels like it's got an entire story to it so i'm just really 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 excited for this one man so yeah, it'll, sure. it'll be coming it'll be coming to you guys very very soon more info um more info very soon guys this, this, this is, 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 is Kazo Un unleashed on Sirius XM. Do you stream? On Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Do you, you stream doing? gaming? Yeah. Just I, I don't even game. I just fuck around with people like on, you're on like, Fortnite. You're I like, just like a troll. Yeah, much. Oh, yeah I troll one hundred percent. You troll hard. Yeah, that's why. I mean, I, that's why I usually play Fortnite is a troll. What do you do? How do you troll <laughs> just on piss Fortnite? Off, just piss. Just piss people off. Piss the, um, my teammates off. Just yeah. like going to scrims and just like not following the rules. <laughs> Gmax out there just causing trouble in the Fortnite world. They have like fashion shows where you go show off your skin and then like really? yeah, there's hella people and like me and my friends just throw grenades and just like fuck it up. <laughs> the entire there's fashion shows in Fortnite. Yeah. For real? Damn, I haven't played it in so long. I didn't realize there's a whole new world there. Oh, fashion <laughs> shows. What does your character look like? Can you create like can, can you like do crazy modifications to your character in Fortnite? I can't remember. I mean, I'm not sure, not too crazy, but you can change your backpack and like oh, that's what it do is, all the stuff. Backpack and all that. That's right. Yeah. In COD, you can make your guy look crazy. Well, I was gonna say you're also 
you uh the one thing that i've never i've never been able to get into not because there's anything wrong with it i just i guess i missed the boat was tiktok oh, you're yeah. big on tiktok you like you like tiktok yeah, yeah. i've been doing it a little bit it's just pretty fun at yeah. first i was like nah i don't like tiktok and then yeah. like i just started swiping now i'm addicted every that's what everyone <laughs> that i know says everyone's like i don't need tiktok i don't want tiktok and yeah like i don't download it. i told him and to then they just TikTok. start swiping on it and then like and then next thing you know it's like eight hours have gone by and you For watch every <laughs> fucking trending video or a dance or it keeps you, know, you literally like locked in. Yeah, it's crazy. On TikTok. I, I I guess I'm just I like literally don't even have it. I'm sure I, my handle is probably not even available at this point. TikTok's been around so long, um, but I'm so out of the loop with that. But it's it's like a big platform. What do you do on TikTok? Like, what's your thing? Do you like um, do you like have certain types of videos or like a vibe on TikTok that you do? I, yeah, just like whatever video I think is like the interesting, you know, to put up. I just put them up, you know. Yeah. You don't like follow any, but I feel like a I lot do of people. A couple trends, but yeah, because like, I feel like a lot of people get on there and just like do whatever is the trendiest thing. Yeah, and I just, I guess I just don't even know what is like even trending on TikTok right now. Some of them are kind of like too like I don't know corny for me. Like <laughs> I won't go that far, you know. But like yeah. I'll do some of them, you know. You know what? I've seen a couple that are really crazy. There's like a whole community on TikTok that do like crazy like makeup and stuff, right? Yeah, like, that shit's cool. Which is crazy. I've seen some of that, and I'm like, this is insane. But I, I don't know the trends. I guess I'm, I'm I feel. Feel really old it's like dancing that. trends I feel dancing like. trends okay. yeah and there's also triller now there's a whole nother new oh one yeah i don't know anything about that it's like really. tiktok too right but it's like more long format is it more oh, you can do longer videos yeah it's just like a selfie music video you make oh that's cool yeah i need to i need to get i need to get more more there's more. like triller artists and tiktok artists too I feel there's like. tiktok artists well just like people that are more suited to tiktok and people that are more suited to triller yeah that makes sense and people are just like so like there's like people that are like famous like straight up like made their entire career off of like tiktok now yeah for real which i remember like that's kind of like what vine was i guess vine is like tiktok's like the new vine right yeah damn i'm so out so of like jake dude. paul and logan paul came from tiktok from, no, vine. from vine yeah all came from vine right that's what i remember i had vine i never made a vine but i had one because i watched a lot of vines so i guess maybe i would like TikTok. Yeah. i look at these tiktokers they'll be like dm for business inquiries <laughs> really yeah <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they're like 12 years old and then you realize you're like you're like all right and you give it's like a like a, a 12 year old literally like yeah. but then you look at how many followers they have like three million followers and they're like yeah i make like this much a week i'm like dude you're in middle school <laughs> for real dude. i remember being your age and i just fucking Watch Pokemon. I don't know when played Yu-Gi-Oh. Feel like I was riding bikes and shit. Yeah, like. I, was, I was outside. <laughs> That's what I'm like. I, not to like, not to like bag on like the current culture of like technology and how every kid is on technology. But I'm very, very happy that I grew up in like the 90. Like I, I was born in 1991. So, well, obviously there was no social media. Yeah. And there was barely any even cell phones at that point. And like. I was. I just. I guess. I feel very lucky that I. I had. I, I had a childhood where I just played outside. I just did everything outside, like hide and like whatever it was. We like me and my friends would play like street hockey or basketball or. I feel that. Yeah. Same. Or hide and whatever. Like whatever it was, we'd do dumb stuff like go toilet paper. Did you ever do that as a kid? Like I toilet yeah. papered houses. Me and my friends would like just toilet paper houses, play ding dong ditch. I don't know if kids still do that. If there's kids that still do that, then I feel like just technology is getting so too advanced. But I see like <laughs> uh, like seven year olds with iPhones, and like there's like kids on Instagram that are like six with like 80 million followers. And I'm like, what's <laughs> happening, dude? What's going on? It's, cra- it's crazy. But yeah, I don't know. I I think it's cool. Also, technology is awesome. But I think like I'm very I, like I I'm very lucky that I grew up outside like getting hurt playing sports like same same wasn't able to be on i guess tiktok or twitter but it's cool now can't be mad at it it's pretty dope but shout out being outside <laughs> being a kid outside it's a lot of fun yeah what did you do growing up as a kid like like uh, a lot oh, of shit outside oh, yeah yeah like um capture the flag yeah Soccer. dude capture the flag that was a fun game now yeah it's just, now it's just on cod but people used, <laughs> people used to play Capture the Flag in real life. You didn't know, guys. You didn't just have to play it on Call of Duty. We would like go to parks and then just like get a stick and make a line through yeah. the fucking like wood chips. Yeah, I used to play this game called Kick the Can. Do you know? Does anyone know what that is? Yeah, for sure. Where you would just literally put a fucking can in the middle of a cul-de-sac and you would go hide and then be someone that was it. And you would have to try to go sneak up and kick the can before they tagged you. And if they tagged you, you were out. Damn. It was crazy. That was fun. Damn, we should go. You know, that's what I'm going to do with my team. I'm going to do a, a team trip where we just go play games <laughs> like capture the flag, kick the can, all of that shit. No one's allowed to bring their phone. No you ever play King out. of the Hill? Where like there's, uh, it's like you tackle each other and there's a yeah. dude on top of the hill. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't think I ever played it growing up. I know of King of the Hill, but we never really we never played that, no. 
We did stupid stuff, honestly. We would like go toilet paper houses. We would go mess with people's. I, me and my friends during like Christmas as kids, we would go like mess with the decorations, like make the deers hump each other. <laughs> we were like stupid kids. We were like outside doing that, and then that was a lot of fun. We, though. we played man uh, manhunt. It was like hide and seek, but like more intense and like really. We would like sneak into like a school or like what? Or something. Damn, and, like, I need to get on that. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. I just played generic we had, like, hide flashlights. There's like some like really. Yeah, I just played like generic hide and seek. I don't know. Shit. I guess I'm missing out. But now there is no such thing as hide and seek. It's just TikTok. <laughs> hide and seek's retired. It's a, yeah, that's your like location's always on too on Snapchat. So yeah, you wouldn't be able to hide. Everyone would be like, all right, I'm just check my my. Uh, <laughs> For my, real. Hey, just like, where's my best? Oh, where's my best friend? Oh yeah, I have their location. I can easily tag them. That's crazy. Yeah, everyone's got their location on and shit. That's kind of crazy. How long? I was gonna ask you this. How long have you been even? How long have you been making music as Jumex overall? Um, I mean, this new shit, like, I, I since 2016, I was in a band before this, yeah. and, like, they, they weren't, like, committing, they had other shit. And what type of band was it? It was, like, a punk band, punk yeah. run shit. What was the name of it? No Signal. No Signal. And it was, like, a guy, and he had, like, a suit, and it, he had a TV on his head. Really? Yeah. What role did you oh, play in the band? What well, you? I first played bass, and then I played, played guitar. Bass. All right, so you're a guitar player in the band? Yeah. How long was that band around? It's, like... Two years, maybe. How'd you guys all meet? You guys like just friends and like yeah, just high school. High school friends and made a band. We met at the skate park, like hey, I guess in Chicago. Yeah, <laughs> fire. And then and then, um, what made you turn? It? Like, so you wanted to get out of that because you wanted to to take it more seriously, right? Like you were saying, the guys in the band were not. As yeah, serious. like they were just like doing other shit. Like it was just crumbling. Like I just really wanted to just do my own shit, you know? Yeah. And then so I started a SoundCloud. <laughs> you started. And then was Jumex the first name you stumbled on? It was Lil Jumex. Yeah, Lil Jumex. Yeah. Yeah. What is what does Jumex mean? Like, what's the what's the meaning behind it? Jamming. It's just it's just basically like um, it's just Mexican juice. I would like get all the time when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. There was like a Tony's across the street from my house, like next to the park. Okay. And um, yeah, like my friend's mom wouldn't let uh, my friend cross the street, but we always would. And like, it was like the only thing that was like affordable. It was like one dollar, like really? fifty cents sometimes. It's fire. That's a that's a good that's a good. And I love the name. color too. It's like it's like it's like yellow and like. So green. it kind of inspired the colors. Like yeah, you're kind yeah. Of, uh, you're inspired by now. That's interesting my name so Kezo has been the only name I've ever had and it's like it's so weird how I became how I came up with it well it's not really that interesting it's not that crazy but it's just weird I had when I was going to icon that that school I was talking about earlier we had a class for three months a music business class and we would like we would just learn different things about the music industry on the business side and then one of the days it was about like creating a brand and like as an artist if you wanted to be if that was your goal like having a, a brand identity or an artist identity and like one of them was just like kind of like it wasn't to be taken like I mean it was to be taken seriously but it was a class project it wasn't like whatever name you pick now is the one forever and but um I was just like fucking around with like names on paper my name's Hayden and then um the last letters in my last name are Zio so Zo and I'm like just putting letters together and I wanted it to be Zo just Zio and O and I'm like that's that sounds cool and then I realized there's another DJ that goes by Matt Zo and I'm like that's a little too close that's not gonna make sense to people and so I started so I had the Z and the O and I was like I need to work backwards here and I was like trying to put letters in my first name I was like A-Y and I was like Hazo that doesn't make sense that sounds whack and then I was like well the first letter in my last name is a C so I put a C there C-A-Y-Z-O and I'm like that doesn't look right either and then so I just started going through the alphabet Try to eliminate. Uh, just, <laughs> I, got, I got to the K. I was like, Kzo. Damn, oh. your music career is off a school project. What? Yeah, that's, that, that's what's crazy. Like, <laughs> I didn't. In the moment, I'm like, this is cool. I'll turn this in. It looks cool. It's easy to say. It's got some like cool lettering. Like the letters are cool letters. Like the, the you can do cool things with the Z and O and Y. I'm like, this looks cool. Yeah, the angular. Yeah, and I'm like, all right. And uh, I had like my roommate at the time, like make me a logo off of like fucking whatever program he was using because I like. We needed like a, a logo, and it was just like it looked cool. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. I'll uh, I'll just use this for the project and through school. And then uh, eight years later, it's still my name. So I, I guess it worked out. I don't know. But people always say it differently. Uh, do you ever people do, do people mispronounce Jumex? Mm. Or is it always pretty like Jumex? I think it's supposed to be Humex. It's I mean in, in Mexico <laughs> it's like Humex too because like the J is silent. So but you go by Jumex like that's how yeah, you say Jumex, it. Humex. Do you it, say you say Humex too sometimes? Yeah, I do both. It's right. cool to have both. Yeah, I guess that's, that's right. I guess I should in, embrace the other ways. People always say, yeah. which is weird. People always like, especially in Europe or or anywhere else really outside the US, they say Kaizo. I think someone just called you Kaizo just now. 
I was really? gonna, have we been saying it wrong the whole time? No, it's Kaz. Well, <laughs> yeah. no, it's Kaz. I said it as Kaz. Mm-hmm. That's why I mean it's K- cool as K Y Z O. But people always say Kaizo, and I'm like, how does that? It's re- interesting how the brain works because when I look at it, I would never do it. I never think A and Y would be Kai or K A Y would be Kai. It's K. Mm-hmm. And then everyone's like Kaizo, Kaizo, and I'm like, how the fuck? Like, how does that look like Kaizo to you? But it's just interesting. I think Kaizo is cool too. I just usually just tell people it's Kezo because they always ask me. They're like, is Kezo or Kaizo? I'm like Kezo. But Kaizo, I guess, works. Maybe I should just em- embrace Kaizo. <laughs> embrace Humex, Jumex, Humex, Kezo, Kaizo. It could be like my alias is Kaizo. I can make like deep, dark techno or something in, the, in my basement and just wear a hood and just be Kaizo. <laughs> Kaizo on Wednesdays, Kezo on the weekend. <laughs> That'd be my new thing. <laughs> Rainy days, I'm Kaizo. <laughs> Sunny days on Kizo. <laughs> Bars. Yeah. Damn. I should write that down for later. Yeah. That's that's song number two. We can just talk we can just do play on our name. Oh that <laughs> shit. Kizo. Unleashed. Alright guys, well, I think we're reaching the end of the show here. Um Yo, Jumex, Humex, Jumex. I'm just going to call you both right now. It was a pleasure having you on the show today, dude. Yeah, thank you for having me, dude. Yeah, man. And um, like I said, we got a song coming out with me, Jumex, and Graves called Breakable very, very soon. Uh, more info on the date um, shortly, guys, but it's going to be coming out soon. And uh, we're really excited about it. But um, I want to thank you guys so much for listening today on Sirius XM, Jet Blows Revolution. My name is Kezo. This was Unleashed Radio, and I will see you guys next month for episode number seven. This, this is, 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 is Kato Unleashed. Unleashed.